Okay, I'm going to call this meeting, regular meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission for the Town of Clarkdale today, Tuesday, December 5th at 6.30 p.m. Thank you all for attending. Could we please have a roll call? Commissioner Stein? Present. Commissioner Biggins? Present. Commissioner Lindner? Present. Vice Chair Gavard? Here. And Chair Gibson? Present. Thank you. Next item of business is public comment. Is there anybody in the public that needs to comment? Okay, I don't see any. Thank you. So we can move on oh, to item number so four. Just came in. Oh, oh. They're late. Oops. Oops. Benefit of the doubt? No need. Oops. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Okay, next item is uh, approval of the minutes for November 7th. I have a motion and a second to do uh, discuss these minutes. Make that motion. I'll second. Mr. Linder, thank you. And Stein, thank you. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes for November 7th of 2023, say aye. 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 Five oh, thank you. Okay, new business number five. The town manager Ruth Mayday accept, consider, and act on the historic preservation ordinance and initiate the zoning ordinance text amendment process. Thank you. I'm having a little bit of feedback here. Oh, you, we just got started. I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and could you also, um, Ruth, in your... I mean, it just does not... Well, all right. Okay, yeah, fully explain your recommendation to just... Sure, to sure. Brief, just flesh that out. Sure. So um, I want let's walk through all of the changes first. We can make sure we've got that, and then I'll come back and talk about the recommendation. Okay. So, guess if we can get up to the actual ordinance, there we go. Oh, whoa, whoa, there we go. So step took step took all of this. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. That's better. So staff went through the draft ordinance and uh, incorporated all of the changes that the commission provided last time. So just to walk through those changes in section 3-170010, which is the purpose, uh, we clarified the language in uh, number five, uh, encouraging the identification protection of prehistoric and historic archeological resources and enhancing the value of the historic district and properties. And then also number six, protecting and preserving those properties within the town, which are valuable to the preservation of the community character. And then eight, supporting historic tourism. I think we had just tourism in there before. So we changed it to historic tourism. Uh, section, the next section down is the historic district designation. Uh, this talks about the, the district in general. Uh, in B, we changed the portion. Uh, we took out the uh, opt-in uh, option. We took the opt-in option out <laughs> and made this a mandatory um, compliance. So I, this is a good place for um, us to stop for just a second and talk about the Prop 207 issue, conversations I've had with attorneys and those sorts of things. So. Basically, the, the, there are two ways to do the same thing. So if we make this mandatory, property owners still have the ability to opt out. So they can, as a property owner, if we implement this ordinance, they have statutorily three years to come to us and say, I want out. They have to demonstrate. They also have to demonstrate that there's a negative impact to their property. There are studies out there that will say, "Oh yes, this is going to harm your property, or there will be an issue with your property." So the 
the solution for that is really twofold, or actually threefold. Number one, we say, okay, fine, your property is out. Number two, we do, they come to us and say, I want my property out and you've, ca you've caused me this dollar amount of loss of value. We say, okay, fine. Is there a particular part of this ordinance that you would like to be exempted from? Or is it the whole thing that you want to be exempted from? So then we can negotiate them before initiating any court action. Mm -hmm. The final step would be to go to court and duke it out in court, which is not what municipal attorneys or staff like to do. So the odds are we would be able to settle it in one of those two, um, either exempt them from it or um, exempt them from portions of it that they object to. Right, but we're, we're still leaving this, the 50 foot high loophole there on page three of 15. Right, so- Which would be really, what, what from what I understood from your correspondence would, would be the only or, uh, thing that really somebody could swing at us. But. Exactly. So, so the, like we like we said in the past, this is an overlay district, so it goes over other existing zoning districts. Right. And in this instance, it's largely the central business district. And there are um, development standards set forth in there: the fifty-foot building height, um, building to the property line, those sorts of things that these property people who already own these properties already have rights to. Those, if we say, so sorry, you no longer can build a 50 foot building, you can only build two stories, that will get us in trouble. Right. So messing with the underlying zoning is what will get us into trouble for sure. So we can't mess with that. We can ask for two stories. Right. We can provide some incentives or some other things to encourage them to do two stories. Right. But we can't demand that they do two stories. Right, and knowing the the engineering differences between a two story building and a five story building, if it, somebody wants to invest that much money, Clarkdale has shake their hand. <laughs> I mean, that's things go up uh, double. The engineering goes up above three stories every floor you go. So, right, exactly. Commissioner Stein. So, just for clarification, that would be for individuals who currently own the property while we're making these changes. The zoning exists currently that would allow them to build. Right. So that would be existing owners. However, if those owners were to sell those buildings, right. since the passage of our historic ordinance or guidelines, they would not apply to new owners. The overlay, the underlying zoning would still apply to the new owner owners. Okay. The overlay district, because it's already in place, they could not exempt themselves from the overlay. But my second, I just, I just need some clarification. Sure. The, the law twelve eleven thirty four reads: If the existing rights to use, mm -hmm. divide, sell, or possess mm -hmm. private property are reduced. So our historic preservation guidelines or ordinance, whatever we mm -hmm. choose to call them, would not affect the use, divide, sell, or possess. It's an aesthetic guideline. So, so that- uh, Yes, I see where you're going with that, right. So, so what we've written, what you've written here and that mm -hmm. we've reviewed are really aesthetic guidelines and have, little to do with how they use it, divide it, sell it, or possess it. If someone can make a car wash look like the old hotel <clears throat> or Miller's Market, it would still be a car wash and they could, on the former tennis courts, as long as it looks right. like it fits here, correct? So, and yes, I think where you, you would see legal pushback is in the use part. Right, and we're we're not dictating use with our ordinance. We're di we're not even dictating. I'm sorry, I use that. I'm sorry, I introduced that word. Um, we're Great. not we're not we're talking about aesthetics, right? And, and how the building looks, and not how it is used or divided. Correct. I mean, as I read the new draft, mm -hmm. it says nothing to me about use, divide, sell, or possess. So that's that. That's one of my. I'm perplexed, and I just wanted to share my confusion on that. And you're not alone. There's a lot of perplexiness around okay. the interpretation of Prop 207, and one man's 
use or possession is another way and that's, okay. you're taking my stuff away. <laughs> okay. So that's that's where that gets into fine detail. Thank you. No problem. Okay, please. any other questions this juncture? Yeah, I'm, I'm still uh, not clear on what's, what an owner can exempt themselves from the whole process. What, what do we, can you give us a scenario with what that would look like? So if someone were to come to you, to, to somebody that owned a building, came to us and said, this is devaluating, devaluing my property. By doing this, you're now driving up my property maintenance costs. You're driving up all my other costs. And I can't recover that cost in rent. So now my property is worth less because I can't develop it. You now owe me X number of dollars because that's the dimin diminishment of value because of the action that you've taken. Would that be more along the lines of somebody wanted to demolish property and build something? It could be, it could be that, it could be just a simple reha rehabbing a building. So that's where we get into this issue with the Prop 207. I guess my concern is we're gonna have property owners opt out right away. That's, and they have that under Arizona law, they have that right. Okay, so I poured to Tom Blanchard an example that Phoenix did with their overlay district. And what they did was when they instituted this process, they asked for all the property owners to sign a waiver. Mm -hmm. And if 80% said they, they were gonna comply, then if others didn't, it didn't matter. That was the way they could cover themselves. From yeah, a loss. It didn't matter. I talked to the one of the attorneys about that case. And if if they do not sign the waiver, they're they're not subject to the ordinance. No, what it was it was 80% right. of the people, 80% of the property owners in that district mm -hmm. signed the waiver. Right. It didn't matter if the other 20 did. It still went through. They were trying to say that a majority of the property owners want to have that but when it allow the other owners to be right but that other 20 cents percent still has the right to that's, exempt themselves that's not way I understood it but okay i'm just concerned that we're gonna we're gonna have people opt out already and then i don't know how that helps the town okay. develop well it's arizona again is a very much a private property rights state very much so and that's really one of the driving forces behind Prop 207 after the Kilo case was to make sure that the private property owners had their property their property rights protected. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the escape hatches, so to speak, if, if there is something that the, if the government does to regulate your property and you don't like it, you have three years to say, no, I don't comport with, I don't agree with this, I want my property out. And here's how you're devaluing my property. So what kind of documentation would they have to have to say that it's going to devalue? I mean, they just can't come and say, I'm opting out because I think they have if you're to talking and say, this is what my costs are going to be. And now I can't get, and it will. So this rehab of this building is going to cost me $300 per square foot. There is no way I can rent it for that. I, I just have a concern that it, well, the ordinance is, is going to have any meat to it and we're going to have some current owners. Well, this is that. a statutory exemption. This is I know what I'm saying, but our ordinance, I have a feeling it's not going to have any weight to it because of because of that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whatever the people feel. I, I, I did happen to get from staff a list of the property owners within the historic overlay if you want to look at those and see if any of those uh people raise a red flag for you if, if you want to go and have that discussion at a later time i do have those that list here okay, okay. i think moving on would be really good if that's okay. i do too okay, okay. All, right. all right thank all right. you all right so next gus thank you so in this section, development standards, we change um, in the first paragraph, it previously said project should honor the Secretary of Interior standards, it's now shall. And then we changed uh, the last word in the next paragraph to incorporated, where we start getting into all of the development standards. Um, and under siting, we added for new construction, one and two story buildings are encouraged. So if we get into a situation where there's some sort of infill or new construction in downtown, we can ask them to keep it at that height. Do we need to make a note that for the CD zone underlay that there's 50, 
but is allowed or no we just want to leave that no, under the rug this is, so if somebody comes to us with a project in this area we go here's the hard zoning here's the overlay okay, and they, and they, can, read they the can see the yep the tea leaves okay yep thank you um, <laughs> next section is section b uh, exterior wall design materials and finishes and then the incorporation of design features such as parapet walls cornices frieze dental trim, mantle can metal canopies, canvas awnings, clear story windows, transom windows, storefront display windows, recessed doorways and bulkheads are required for new construction. So we incorporate those into any new construction projects. Is it is it intended to say all of those or just a selection of those or uh, I guess- There's a such as in that phrase. So it doesn't say they're all required. It incorporates such as parapet yeah. walls. So we would be looking for some combination. some combination of those. Okay. And then we have the one, the, the following is the language from the last one. The use of brick is required. This structural or uh, veneer masonry, painting of brick is discouraged, so forth. Section C, um, <clears throat> roof and parapet walls. Uh, varied roof lines and parapet walls are required for new construction. Again, trying to address the infill issues that might arise. Preservation and restoration of existing parapet walls is required or are required. Um, so that's pretty much it for those two sections. Section D, um, down to uh, number four, transom and clerestory windows are required for new construction. And then rounded arches are encouraged when feasible in new construction, preserved or restored in existing structures. Uh, site features is next, That's section E. Uh, the purpose of this section is to provide guidance for site features. These features include, but are not limited to, walkways, benches, and so forth. Landscaping shall be drought, drought tolerant, uh, building planter beds or containers. Uh, we added building in. Lighting shall not detract from the historic character of the structure and must comply with the Town of Clarktail Zoning Code, Section 8-070, which governs outdoor, outdoor lighting. Uh, subsection D, the application can be submitted concurrent with the review process, and that speaks to the outdoor cafe permit. Uh, section 3-170030 is the application process. Have you changed that to, I'm sorry? Uh, is that a duplicate mistake where we got two sections with the same number, the development and the application process at both at 170 or 30? So, yeah. It looks like they're the all 170 three oh one seventy oh four oh. So uh, on page so seven to fifteen in the thing is oh is oh four oh. Right. So uh, the certificate of appropriateness is oh four oh. No, but it's the application, application, process. application process and the development standard have the same section number. I'm sorry, we'll have to make that change. So that should be 040. Yeah. So that make so the just to make them all change. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The application process um, uh, mandates the pre application review. Uh, we added staff into the next paragraph. Uh, subsection two um, refers uh, to. Approval through the certificate of appropriateness process. We added that language in. Uh, so now we're at section 050. Certificate of appropriateness. We went through and uh, uh, deleted a lot of the duplic duplicate language in here. So the changes in this section really are minor certificate of appropriateness. We added minor COA in parentheses and then added minor in line number four, five, the public will be notified of approval. And then um, if a minor COA is not issued, a major certificate of appropriateness will be required. Uh, the next page is major COA, and we uh, made pretty much the similar changes, only major. Um, notice shall be given in conformance with the notification process for public hearings before the planning commission. That would be the process for uh, public hearing before the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, section 060 would be a certificate of hardship. Uh, this clarifies that no certificate of hardship shall be issued to a new construction project. 
And then in subsection B, in order to properly assess the re request for a certificate of hardship, staff shall request and receive from the applicant. Uh, we added staff in there. And then uh, section 3 170070, uh, demolition of moving and structures, all the way down at the bottom, subsection E. Relocation of structure shall follow the process set forth in section 3 170070D and also obtain a certificate of appropriateness as set forth in section 3 170040, which would now be, I believe, 050. All right, buddy. And so does our ordinance have 14 or 15 pages overall? So 12, 13, it's 14, including the two exhibits. Okay. So that should be noted on the bottom of the footer too. We're 14 of 14 there. We're running footers a page long too. Okay. Any comments, questions, tirades? I think the changes and reorganization are. Right. Very well done and make it quite clear and well organized and easy to follow. Typos happen with numbers all the time. Oh, these guys are right next to each other. With headers and numbers and stuff, it's nice to keep them close. Maddening. They've changed by themselves sometimes, changing things. So I think the language is strong, regardless of the litigious possibilities. I think as it's written, it provides um, a a representation perhaps of not quite the strength that we, I believe we were voicing a month ago, but it, it strengthens the language and certainly gives it more meat. Um, taking the disclaimer out from the front was helpful for me. There's there's nothing we can do about pushback from the potential public, but I think this reads pretty well. I have questions about the introductory material, but as far as but this section, I think it's a much stronger document. Document. Mr. Linda. Um, I guess my question is that we seem to see two different versions of this. And one of them I think we refer to as the form based code. Mm -hmm. And then we've got this document. Yep. Okay. So why is it that we don't see both of them together at the same time? Well, because this is the this is the version that we brought forward last time. We did not bring the, the form based code through last time. We only brought this portion of it through. So that's why you're not seeing the form based code language. These were the corrections that were provided last time. So that's what staff has brought forward. Okay, but this is you know what we're being asked to do is is provide a, an approval of the final draft, which is mm -hmm. this. Are we going to see the other document as a final? This or... is the final draft. This is the final document. We are not going to do the form-based code. It's too complicated at this point in time for us to do. So we'll never do it? We could pop, we can do it in the future, but for right now, I, I don't think that that's... All right. Well, that's just been a confusing point for me in the first place in terms of why we've been going back and forth between the two. It sounded like earlier that that was a requirement <laughs> to do it in that other format. Um, again, I got a question about, you know, the recommendation. Uh, sure. The text that we, you know, kind of objected to last time has been taken out. What page? Could you please help me with Well, my... I'm just on general. I'm on the recommendation on page 8 of 23. It's in the staff report. Staff, at the bottom yeah, of the staff right. report. And so the, the language that we all kind of express concern over and probably for different reasons, um, you know, which was the opt out provision that was kind of disguised as incentive has been taken out. Mm -hmm. okay? But we don't see it anymore yet. The recommendation is approve this and then we're going to go back and we're going to incorporate those back in there. And um, I'd like to know what that looks like because the whole, whole idea be behind this ordinance was to encourage people to you know do something with the buildings and, and um, you know do it right be respectful um, 
don't do anything that you know are, uh, inflicts permanent damage. You know, paint colors can always be changed, but other things like knocking out windows and so forth can't. So um, I guess that's just a, a big question. I understand that no matter how we vote tonight, this goes up to another level and the council can completely rewrite it and say, hey, or they can even say, we don't want to pass this period. Um, so I guess we're just kind of sitting, at least I'm sitting here thinking, you know, what's what's the next step? What's it going to say? So, so I'm looking at the draft. I understand your question. Yep. And so this is my draft from our last meeting. And I made notations from our meeting and comments, although I never catch all of your detail. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes you're a little over my head, Matt, so I try. But um, what I think the benefit here is mm -hmm. the language that said properties electing to adhere, which I found very problematic because right off the right out of the gate, we're saying, you know, if you want to do this, it'd be really great. And here, here are the incentives we're going to give you. That section, if I'm reading this properly, has been removed. And it essentially says the regulations set forth here and apply to all existing structures within the historic district and to all new construction, uh, all new construction in the district. So we're simply stating you're adhering to these and not the opting well, out language. So well, we, when I when I read the document, I said. Yeah, this is great because it looks like it's gone. But when I read the recommendation, it sounds like, well, yeah, this is the document, but we're, we're going to go back and we're going to reinsert that into the final. Is that what I'm missing? So that is, that's not what that means. Okay. This means that staff's recommendation is to include those incentives, to include that option. Staff recommends that because we have, again, still concerns with Prop 207. I cannot recommend approval of an ordinance where I have concerns about future litigation. The end. That's all this is. Whether or not the uh, planning commission, which is the next step, the public hearing from the planning commission, puts them back in, leaves them out. Town council puts it back in, leaves them out, is entirely up to them. But the staffs, my preference is that we incentivize rather than mandate. I just find it more effective. Okay. Okay, so so then I do need clarification here because the document states the regulation set forth here and apply right. to all existing. And and as the procedure moves forward, we can give people incentives, but we're not saying at the beginning of this document you can opt out. Right. Okay. So, Ruth, are you proposing that uh, should the commission adopt this draft, which is which you cannot recommend us to adopt, is what I'm understanding. Staff's recommendation is that we adopt it with the incentives in place and the option. Okay, but right. they aren't in here, though. So they are not in there. Okay, no. so that's what I'm saying. So right. This is this. So staff presented the document with the corrections that the commission asked to have made. That's what right. we did. My recommendation is that those optional incentives and in the opt out be in, or opt in be included. Okay, and so and where, this, this excuse me, this final draft puts it into up to the state statute for them to opt out, correct. as opposed to letting us letting them opt out in our own ordinance. Yes. Okay, so we're not actually requiring them at all. They can opt out through the state statute. Exactly. Okay. Regardless of what we do. Right. So, but to, to Commissioner Linder's point, the, the form-based code, is that something that we can use, that you can bring back so that we have uh, a worksheet to work through a project that we get given? Or so I said, yes. I, so there is, it wouldn't necessarily be a form-based code per se, more than like we have the illustrations in here and guidance on what exactly it is that is required. Right. Right. Here's what's required. You have to have. We have six things here. You have to. You should have at least four. Right. And that's the conversation we will have with the developer, or the builder. Right. And when we bring them to you, of these six things, these are the four they've chosen. Of these six things, these are the three they've chosen. Of right. these six things, they've decided to do. So, them. so what I think what I'm asking for is, are you going to be developing like a rubric for yes. us to use so using the R using the form based code. 
as a as a template. So well, yes, yeah, so we'll be using the, the requirements of this code kind of in that format, saying here are the things that are required, right? Okay. So that, that you have something to look at, and here's how that that meets that. Okay. So this that. Well, I still have a couple questions. You're in the fog or not? No, not not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, because you know, just the recommendation kind of I, shaped my interpretation of the uh, introductory paragraph. So if you go to page seven of 23 and, and the middle paragraph that starts with during the November 7th meeting, right? Uh, and I was the one who requested that, you know, can we get a legal opinion on this? Right. And then the paragraph says the advice proffered was that based on the studies widely available, you know, um, the, the, the claim on Prop 207 would be difficult to make. Okay. So is that the legal opinion yes. or was that my opinion when I asked the question was, I don't think there's a case unless they prove damages. This is the- So this, this is the legal opinion. This is the legal opinion is it would be tough to, to, to make a case for this. Okay. Not impossible, but tough. Right. So okay. if that's the case, then how come we're still recommending- Or not recommending. Or not recommending, you know, making it mandatory or if there's incentives, you know, why aren't we spelling it out? So, you know, the, the whole thing is, is that we're going to write something, hopefully it gets passed, but really the test of the whole thing is how it's applied in practice. Does this really incentivize the building orders? Does this really get the downtown uh, restored and revitalized? So, you know, I, I think that, you know, all of that is, is kind of really important. And if, if we aren't kind of prepared to answer those questions tonight, um, I propose that we table this until we are. You know, I, I need to ask a follow-up question because it's germane to your concerns in this. And that's just, I, I'd like to ask for some follow uh, clarification. Mm -hmm. So same paragraph during the November 7th meeting. Uh -huh. uh, third sentence from the bottom, a Proposition 207 claim would be difficult to make. And my question is, for whom? For, for, property, owner. Owner. for a property owner. Right. An existing, a current property owner. And then when a Prop 207 claim would be defendable for the property owner? Correct. Okay. So there would be some post, uh, potential legal costs, well, extra staff time and all that sort of stuff it, to come to not, some I sort of... Like it can, as I was reading this and thinking about the tension between the agency that's trying to set a particular historical standard or an aesthetic standard for the community, I, I could read this from two different directions. Um, and yeah. So, so taking the, maybe this is a better way to think about it, taking the historic preservation overlay away, right? We're not it, it's saying that we don't have one. We still cannot. The, these things that are set here, the 50 feet height, minimum lot size, we can, those are sacrosanct. We cannot not allow somebody to do that. If they want to. If they want to. So if we say to them, no, sorry, no 50 feet, that's what triggers the Prop 207 because right. we have now deprived them of one or two stories of building. Right. But but we could, if they want to build that 50 story, 50 foot building, we can make sure that it fits in. Correct. Right. Yeah. No. I, I got it. Because it's an aesthetic. Right. I got it. Okay. All right. Commissioner, I'm going to interrupt a little bit. No. Commissioner Gabbard, you've been very quiet. Do you have something to add to the conversation? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Biggins. Um, I just have one uh, question on page 11 of 15. We have, uh, we changed it to staff shall request and receive from applicant. But on page 12 of 15 on the third paragraph B, we still talk about historic preservation specialists. I'm sorry, Wait, I'm sorry, what page are you on? 12, 11 of 15 under certificate of hardship. B, we changed it to staff that. shall request and receive from applicant from historic preservation specialist. And then on the following page, uh, B, we still have historic preservation specialist. Should that be staff as well? I thought the whole purpose was to get rid of a historic so preservation I'm specialist. 15, I'm sorry, where is it? B, section B, B, last sentence. 
The building, building officials, officials shall notice, notify yeah. the historic preservation specialist in oh, writing. Actually, yeah, we can take that out when just staff. to say staff. So first notify the staff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Commissioner. That's this is what we eagle eye we need to have happen here. Okay, Commissioner Linder, back to your point. Um, I got somebody said something to the right of me, so I missed your your build up to your point of. Uh, I thought well, I heard a motion to table this. Yeah, I guess what I had proposed was that if that particular language is not you know, available to us tonight, and I consider that to be kind of integral to this, is this, this really needs to be something that in practice applies in a positive way and gets things done. So last time there was language in there that, you know, with staff's opinion in terms of what would be incentives, um, it's not there now. Uh, the recommendation is to basically put it back. So it sounds like there's going to be another step. So if there's going to be another step to put it back, um, I would propose that we table it so that we're part of the wording of that. Well, second. What? I, 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 so I guess I'm confused because there must be operational there. Your motion, there. I still lack of a second. <laughs> Go ahead, Commissioner Stein. I, I'm going to become tedious and boring, and it seems to be part of my nature these days, but the best reference I can make is we have a constitution at the, in the United States that's essentially a, a document of law that says this, that, and the other thing, and how things should work. And then we have regulations that are statutes. based on, well, regulation statutes, but also regulations and procedural orders. So the constitution is kind of the what, and the regulations are the how and the when and the with whom. And maybe I'm misunderstanding these guidelines or this ordinance, but they're the what, and then we'll have regulations and procedural practices, and those would include the incentives. So we're going, we have the what here and how we, how we want things to look and why we want them to look a particular way. And we do it bit by bit. And then we have the application and the review process. But am I misunderstanding that the the regulations and the procedure are with the town and they're going to say, you know, you can fight us on, you can contest, I'm sorry, language is powerful <laughs> term. You can contest or we can take to issue these guidelines and regulations. Um, however, following the guidelines have these incentives and you know, let's work together to meet our, our common goal, which is you would like to have a business in Clarkdale or you would like to have an apartment complex in Clarkdale. And we would like that apartment complex just to look like the other buildings in town. So um, do I misunderstand the job of the historic district ordinance or guidelines versus what is operational procedure? The operational procedure for approval is that the Historic Preservation Commission I'm sorry. makes a recommendation, right? But I'm, I'm talking about the incentives, that the incentives right. would just be part of the operation within the town and not... Not necessarily. So the, the incentive, is, here's where we're getting bogged down, is, is with the incentives. We had the language of opt-in with incentives last time, right? Commission said you would like that language out. So we took it out. Staff's recommendation is that those be incorporated because staff's recommendation is that incentivizing things is a much better way of encouraging participation rather than mandating participation. So it doesn't mean that, that staff is not going to, if, if, if the commission decides they want to go forward with this language the way that is, then this is what staff does. 
We don't not enforce it because we think it ought to be done differently. There's lots of things in the zoning ordinance I think ought to be done differently, but it is what it is, and that's what I have to work with. So this is what I move forward with. Commissioner Gubard would like to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have a previous version? Can we just read the incentive? I have the portion have of it. Writer. I don't remember it being particularly long or even having strong language in it. No, I, 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 there were a couple of right here. I know, and I don't remember removing the incentives, just the the, the was, option part. It was, the the purpose of the incentives was the option. So I I have the draft from our last meeting right here with my notes and a, a accumulation of our other comments that we made, and so. I took issue, and I believe Commissioner Lindner took issue with the language which read prior, uh, properties electing to adhere to the requirements of the Historic Preservation Ordinance shall inure to the following benefits. So I, I distinctly remember we both took issue with choosing to electing to adhere. That was very, for me, wishy-washy language. And so I suggested that we put it further back. If it is something that we want to include that I think I refer to it as burying the lead. And so as I look at this draft, after site features, which is E in part 3170, uh, and it would be 020, I think, without flipping back and forth, um, the town wants to put them back in and you're concerned that they're going to be put back in after we approve this document. Is that correct? Yeah, because we're not the final approval. It's going to go to uh, planning and then to the council. So, so, what so if, if there's going to be something that advances, I would much rather have the ability to take a look at that um, to see that it really does provide incentives and doesn't, you know, provide roadblocks or, you know, the other thing that we objected to in that language was it was kind of disguised. They didn't say, hey, you can opt out. It um, says, you know, those that opt in, you know, and, and that was all based on supposedly that we absolutely had to do that based on the prop, but now we got the legal opinion that says, no, that's not really not the case. That's not really the case. You have to so opt in. That is, no, no, no. We're gonna have to opt out. There. That yeah. is the case. That is the case. You have to opt out. Right. You, they have, no matter what we put in this ordinance, property owners have three years to sure, opt out can, of this. That they, is they their schedule. do that, but we're not automatically sued and on the hook. We have the ability to get out of that that scenario. So um, We still could include the, the incentives for people that do decide not to opt out. Right? So... I, I respect your concerns. I understand them and I embrace them. And I'm looking at the language right now as, as we're we're sitting here. And you're you don't want to approve for a document that may be added to after the fact. This is your well, concern, I, correct? I would much rather have some input to the content if content is going to be added. You know, no matter what our opinion is, I'd, I'd rather have some input. Right. So, so right do now, you have your draft from last month? No, I did not bring so, the draft. Okay. So I, I have it right here, and I can tell you what what those incentives were because they made sense to me. And so one of them is an accelerated review of the historic preservation process. So projects, accelerated permitting of historic preservation projects waived application fees for historic preservation projects. And then in the course of our discussion, I can't remember whose recommendation it was that they receive additional promotion or publicity recognized on our website or you know, <laughs> some kind of, there you go, look what's happening here in town. And then include, and this one was mine, but only because it was on the agenda item for include in interpretive signage. You know, that if you build a new building and you follow the design review, you know, the historic, that will put up a sign that says it's in This is not a historic building, but they did a great job. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> so these were the five points that, um, that we discussed in the meeting. So are you suggesting that we ask it be added as part F in section 020 after site features? Because that would come before the application process. Or would it be more appropriate in the application process? 
you you bring up really good ideas, but it just seems like instead of tabling, maybe we could work together. Yeah, as, lo as long as it's in there, because currently everything has been taken out, and I think Chair Gibson uh, uh, made a, a, a valid comment. Um, we didn't necessarily ask that the incentives be taken out. We didn't we didn't like the way that it was presented in terms of opting in and opting out. So again, I I would like to see uh, that wording. Uh, so that we pr we push something forward that we've all really bought into that we think should be the final document. Right now, we really don't know what that's going to look like. And uh, could we put those uh, incentives back in under Section three dash one seven zero dash zero two zero historic district designation under B as B one or B one through four, whatever the however many. See, well, my how many of those were. That we're talking about if it's 020, it's out of context there. Development standard, sitting, uh, wall design, roof and parapet. It's been reorganized rather cleanly so that it, our rubric is 020, essentially. The application process might be a more appropriate location yeah, for incentives. So. Am I getting this wrong? Really? No, no. Uh, I think you're right. I think no, you're right. I think. I mean, it's like it's the application process. So A under A, then should it become A? No, I don't want it that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so that again, it just it could be item five. Just to clarify, the purpose of the incentives was to incentivize people to opt into the district, right, or not opt out, right, right. or not opt out. Right. Okay. So we would have to go back and. But the property owners are going to be well aware, probably, I would think, of the 207 process. Yeah. Right, but I think <clears throat> I, I, I agree. I think the, the incentive should be put back in there. If they have the option to get out, anyway. Yeah. Else, I, we but the, put them in, right? This is this the is way. <laughs> uh, no, 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 that I mean, is not true. No, it was the language. It's a sentence where it says properties electing to it here. We were okay with the other part. It was that first sentence. That's what everybody yeah. was not so, but comfortable with. That was the point of the, the incentives was to encourage people to opt in or not opt out. If we are mandating it, there's no need to incentivize participation. Except that they can opt out. Right. But, okay. I, so, <laughs> see, this is, I, I guess I just did a poor job of trying to explain. No, no, no. You did a fine job. The, the issue here is that the last time around, we talked about Section B, where we gave the incentives to incentivize people to opt into this and, and participate in this ordinance. Right. The commission was clear that they wanted mandated. There was no purpose in leaving in op, leaving in those incentives if participation is mandatory. That was the whole purpose of the incentives was to make it beneficial to participate. We have now taken that that option away. Right, I, but I think the commission did not know that that they had three years to opt out anyways. I think that's is is the. But aren't, aren't those things just good things to um, offer to people who are willing to invest in the historic buildings? Uh, pat, paving a, a very easy path, a very attractive path to go do it. I, is it all right if I speak again? Please. I respect what you're saying, Commissioner Lindner, and I understand what you're saying, but there's two ways to look at this. The document, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my notes and the draft from the last time we were together and all of the changes that we requested were made and clarified. What is no longer in this document are the incentives. I believe that the incentive, okay, so you want the incentives put back in, which is going to mean a month or actually two months because we don't have a January meeting, right? And it's December now. So this would postpone getting something done by another two months. And I respect that, right? You want this put back in or you you would feel more comfortable with it being back in. <clears throat> I see that incentives can be made operational within the application process and through the town. 
So we can we can insist that it's in the ordinance, thereby kind of saying going back and taking the meat out of what we asked for, or we can let them, the town and the process provide these, not necessarily incentives, but benefits to staying within the ordinance or the, the historic code. It's six and one half dozen in the other for me. So, and I guess the other question is, if I'm offering these incentives to the historic district, why am I not also offering them to the commercial corridor? Can they opt out of something? Can they opt yeah, out? Yeah, there's an 89A overlay that, well, no, that was adopted before 2006. Well, if they don't have the option to opt out, then there wouldn't be any reason to give there, them There incentives. could very well be other examples of where, I mean, I, it, it just, it's, I think. We can, if you want to add the language back, we can add, add the language back on and send it back up. If Commissioner Stein, if I could borrow your. Yeah, I'm happy to. See. I just handed it to Matt, and I'm happy to write it out and send it off. Like, it's it these. We read into the record, which it kind of was already. But. Right. So, under section, we could um, add section C under historic district designation. And just say um, properties in the historic district, uh, historic preservation district shall receive the following application benefits accelerated review, accelerated permitting, waived application fees. Um, we can't really do promotion or publicity. I mean, we can put it on the website, but that's really not a, that's a, a, a procedural thing. Yeah. Right. They were just, I, I don't know. Yeah. So if, if that's the way the commission would like to send this forward, then we can do that. We'll do that. Chris, want to vote or give me a nod on the head, nod of the head. Can I think please, it's pretty much. Can we please have that reread? Right. So under section 3-170-020, historic district designation, we will add a section C. Or, or um, D, I think, or you move D, C is the map. G, just move it down, yeah. Oh, C is the Design Historic Preservation Commission still serve as Design Review Board for the district. Right, so, so change that to D. We, we'll make that D. Okay. C will be... Following benefits or whatever. Properties. Historic. Hmm. District properties. That choose to remain in the district. <clears throat> the the no, more we rewrite, is that, the no, no, I know. Takes the meat out of it. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying we need. Do we need to reference uh, the statute under which they can opt out? No. No. Okay. No. In ordinance. So we'll just today. put this language back in. Properties electing to adhere to the requirements. We'll just put this. No, why do we say properties conforming to the requirements? Well, because they have to conform. <laughs> well, they can elect not to, though. Yeah. Uh, so this goes back to the point that right. we made a month ago. You're putting back in that for which we fought against a month ago. Right. So if we're going to put it back, it's staff's preference that we put the language back the way it was so that we're not having last minute disputes and there's no question about what it will say. So we will simply put this section B back in as section B. B. Yeah. Properties electing to adhere to the requirements of the historic preservation ordinance shall inure to the following benefits. Accelerated review, accelerated permitting, waived application. <laughs> right. Because they can walk away within those three years, anybody can. Okay. Commissioner Stein. Right? I, I can see both. All I can do is present both sides of this. And we fought to have it taken out a month ago. And now we're asking to have it put back in. So I, I can see both sides of it. We just, have, yeah, we have more legal, we have more legal information now, though, which definitely colors my decision. 
the, the thing that's different for me is that we, we have the legal opinion that says it's not an automatic legal settlement um, that the applicant has to prove that they've been damaged, which I said all along. I was proposing that they go through the waiver process. Uh, they're not going to go through that waiver process, but the principle is still the same. You can't sue unless you have damages. And so I think that's been affirmed that they have to actually prove that there's damages uh, in, in order to do that. So um, and our to me, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little bit more straightforward. And I would like to see uh, incentives accrue to people that are out there trying to get these things done. I'm tired of seeing things sit, sitting there for 40 plus years. And we can't raise roadblocks. We, we need to encourage people mm -hmm. to adhere to this and do it right. Uh, I've said this before, we don't want to see the same type of rehab that we see in Old Town Cottonwood, where they've taken, you know, all kinds of modern building uh, uh, materials and stuff like that and plastered them all over those buildings and, and called it, uh, um, you know, rehabilitation and so forth. That's that's not the purpose of this ordinance. And if, if that's what this is going to result in, then we've wasted a year. A oh, couple. Okay. One question, is there any more language could be added to this document that we're going to vote on, if we vote on it? We could add whatever you want. No, is there, no, the staff, is the staff planning on adding any more language? It's not, of this? it's not up to staff, it will not take this back to my office, add a bunch of stuff, and then send it up the, up the food chain. No. What you approve tonight is okay. one of those. Okay, that's more, that was my question. Well, it goes up the chain, but then right. those after understand. the CV recommendations and they can understand. incorporate in there. So I understand. I just want to know what I'm what I'm <laughs> approving. It has the same effect. Let's okay. Look. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve this uh, final draft with the amendments that were discussed this evening uh, under section 3170-020? As amended. As amended. I shall move. Do I have a second? I will second that. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, could I have a roll call vote, please? All those in favor? Yes? Roll call? Oh, oh. Sorry, I, I, you don't know want me to do a roll call, but I'll do a roll call vote. Commissioner Stein? Aye. Uh -uh. yes. Commissioner Biggins? Aye. Commissioner Linder? Aye. Vice Chair Gibbard and Chair Gibson. Aye. Congratulations. We have, birthed, we have birthed an ordinance. Let's, let's send it up the hill and see if they swat it, if it's in the life. Okay, thank you, Ruth. No problem. Thank you. Okay. We have a discussion item next of the bandstand update. Um, we have not heard yet heard anything back from um, Shippo. Like I said, we've they've agreed to do the voluntary consultation. Uh, we have shipped everything off to Susan Lawson at Shippo, and she is working on uh, some performance based recommendations for rehabbing the bandstand. And that is about where we are at. Okay, and the lights are very nice on the bandstand. So thank you for the staff who did that. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. Okay. Future agenda items. Commissioner Linder. Yeah, I propose that uh, at a future meeting, um, if appropriate, uh, we recognize some good examples of preservation uh, in the community. Um, so if, if anybody wants to drive up Main Street in the 1100 block, there's currently a front porch being restored to its original configuration. I think that deserves recognition and there's other examples of things like that. So I'd like for this commission to maybe be able to put forth something like that. Uh, the town used to have things called Spirit of Heart Yellow Words that could recognize uh, um, things like that. Um, and uh, anyway, I, I think that um, immediate recognition should be made when we see things happening the way they should without being forced. <laughs> Would you like to bring a, a list of, of uh, recipients of some recognition to the next meeting? Sure. Then? Maybe we, we all work with staff. Maybe we all could do that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Excellent. Commissioner Stein. 
Yeah, I would. Did you have a, an, a, in addition to the future agenda item? My, well, my future agenda items would be to um, address the future agenda items that are mounting on our minutes, <laughs> but also to add, um, you Which, brought up the R word, so perhaps it's time to start working on a rubric for the ordinance or the guidelines so that when we are presented with yeah, we could wait until it comes back down the food chain, probably, because you don't know what we're going to get back okay. before we get too deep in that. But that's certainly in the future. Um, also, the, the Bitter Creek Bridge, something we could get a report on, and it's going to be February, so something might happen in two months. Right. <laughs> what else did we have? Broadway sidewalks. Oh, the Broadway, South Broadway sidewalk and uh, bike path project. That's, I think they're going to bid. I'm not sure to Okay, well, like uh, it's a future agenda item. I'm just looking at that. Right. Okay. Is there anything else off that list? Okay. Did you have an input on the future agenda item, Commissioner Gabbard? Um, I don't know if this is appropriate for the meeting in February, but. Um, the joint meeting, I wasn't able to attend that, and I was reading the notes from it and had questions about why things were tabled. I don't know if it's appropriate to discuss that now or in the future. Um, I'd be happy to meet with you outside of the meeting. Sure. So, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I don't have anything to add. Um, so we'll be getting this ordinance back. I guess in February or something. Uh, no, so it steps back. We'll be we'll initiate a public hearing that will probably be in um, February. Yeah. Um, so we can get that going then. Okay. Um, and then we will go to planning commission and then to town council for final approval. Okay, so it's going to go to the planning commission in February. What the, they meet the first? So that would be the fourth Tuesday in, in February to the council, or they do it. They would do it. The, they would go to March. Okay. I'm going to be out of out of town a little bit in February, so I just want to make sure. I'm here. Second week. Okay. All right, is there anything else for the good of the order? Yes, Commissioner Gabbard. Uh, do you know, is there any process for the ordinance to go through review at the state level for like a COG designation? Does the SHPO need to review it or? I'm sorry, for what designation? Uh, certified local government designation. Yes, so that gives the ordinance, and then we already included a number of the items last week, and we need to do the do you know if ship or reviews and comments, or they just say you have it now? And that's pretty much what they say. It's not even okay, great. So by March, we could be right. there. And they quasi approved us so that we can apply for some grant funds. So this is the last portal thing. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I move. Second. Second. All right, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned 7.33.